Hey, what's going on? Yep, Pan African uh, one. I'm working on that one. I might do that one live, as I said before. This one is Louis Farrakhan. Are they real, or are they agents? And obviously, you guys already know what made me just jump up on this one and stop bullshitting on this one. Obviously, with the the young Pharaoh, so-called young Pharaoh, and Sir Ross Suit and Seti, in addition to the usual uh, shenanigans that Louis Farrakhan comes up with <clears throat> or gets himself into. Like I said before, it's the same old game. If you have uh, seen him enough, <laughs> you should ask yourself, okay, what has the man done? That's what you have to ask yourself. And when you come to the conclusion, the only thing that he has done was give speeches. Sound mean, sound like he's about to handle some business, but business never gets done. Of course, you have the Million Man March. And again, I always say this, <clears throat> and people try to challenge, challenge me on it or play stupid, or maybe they don't know. I say, how come the media helped to uh, promote Louis Farrakhan? And by the way, this is going to be a double deal because I'm going to do two at a time in this one. But they're going to be separate. The separate one is going to be on Malcolm X. So some things in here I'm not going to mention because I'm saving it for the Malcolm X one. <clears throat> and I'm just doing this to set my record straight. Yeah, I did try to call that Sarnetta. He <laughs> he hasn't been picking up the line but because he's been. But anyways, I'm going to say that one for the Malcolm X. But anyways, some people say Farrakhan's Million Man March was not promoted. I remember clearly all Nation of Islam chapters, local they made sure that they uh, reached out to every black man. Go to the Million Man March. We're going to make the combinations and, and all that kind of stuff. Don't forget his Millions More. And don't forget his, what is that other one? Uh, something or else or whatever. And obviously the or else never happened. Because, I mean, obviously if nothing happened after the Million Man March, what is that? the or else? I mean, how are you going to tell the white man where well, you have to have permission to, to march or else? Farrakhan is just full of shit. But anyways, I remember the Million Man March uh, thing. People like the Ben X, you know, they're too young for all that. And they used to, like, harass people to uh, go down there. You know, back then, I didn't have no way to get down there. And I, I know they, they made every way possible. Of course, you have to pay, of course. And, you know, to get down there, I'm like, man, what, what, what am I going down there for? That's what I kept asking myself. And, you know, people in the Northeast can get to D.C. But then you got people far south, west, midwest. You know, it costs them more money to get to D.C. But they still went. I didn't go. A lot of people I know didn't go because obviously that was a whole front to uh, make Farrakhan a legit leader for black people by the powers that be. It was a test. If he called you, are you going? If Alquan calls you, which I'm sure a lot of these Nation of Islam guys are talking right now and saying the same thing. If I called you, are you going? Five people might go, and I'm being real. Uh, but see, Farrakhan has the fame. People keep saying he did work, but when you ask them what the work was, they can't come up with it. But it was a test because Farrakhan is their boy. He's a coon agent, no doubt, no question about that. And I'm about to break it all down. I mean, they already broke it down, but I'm going to break some other parts down. They didn't get on. And Pharaoh, my problem with, with Pharaoh is um, he didn't really research anything. He didn't even know too much about what he was talking about. And he said it on air. That's the problem with him. Then the problem with Sarnetta and Reggie, you know, they keep talking about, oh, if you weren't around during those times, you can't speak on it. 
Well, motherfucker, they weren't around during those times, but they're speaking on it. I mean, <laughs> and this is this is crazy, man. You can speak on it because, and you can be correct in what you're saying. Why? Because Malcolm X spoke on it. And that's all you have to do is go by his words. But see, they, like the white man, that they're trainers, they want you to think, forget what he said, the victim. Don't, don't, don't worry about the victim. Worry about what we're saying. That's why the Nation of Islam, they always try to get on people and intimidate and, and send subliminals like, oh, you can end up in a ditch and all that kind of stuff. And don't worry, it's everybody else that might be rolling for Farrakhan besides people uh, in bow ties. First of all, Farrakhan lost his power. That's number one, because people realize he didn't do shit. So, you know, right now it's just like the rap game where they keep trying to make put rappers out there, making it look like they got millions to throw away. Uh, like it was in the 90s and 2000s. It's not like that anymore. But they have to keep the illusion up. So black males will want to become rappers. This is what they're doing with Farrakhan. They're keeping the illusion up of a broken down old man. You can see the man is old years ago. The man started breaking down when he started becoming forgetful. You know, I don't know if he was doing that on purpose or for real. Because, you know, with these guys, they like the, the older they get. They figure they can get away with more because Elijah Muhammad was old and looked old and looked frail. So, you know, I guess it's a part of an illusional thing where people think, well, the older you are, the closer you are to God because you lived a long time. But, you know, it, that's why certain Nation of Islam leaders, there are diff different factions of the Nation of Islam uh, out here. And uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but and that's another thing you could tell when we ask the question, are they real or are they agents? How come the media never, ever talks about these other nation of Islams? They never do. Son of man, Silas Muhammad, Eric Muhammad. Uh, I guess they're still operating as a nation of Islam, the United Nation of Islam. Uh, <laughs> they keep changing things up. Uh, they're still intact. They just switched the name up, man. It's some weird shit, man. I mean, this is weird. But um, there are different nations of Islam. Then there were other ones that fell off the, by the wayside. And then you had the five percenters came from uh, Nation of Islam. But before I get too deep into all that, a million man march when that was happening, don't forget. People say, well, how did the white man promote it? Yes, the Nation of Islam promoted it. But by the white man mentioning it in their media, that's promotion. It doesn't matter if they put it down or tell you Farrakhan is no good. The fact that they are mentioning it, that's promotion. And they're just sticking with the script uh, as far as uh, it shouldn't be a good thing. So you got to watch them because when somebody else wants to promote something, they're not going to be able to get on CNN, let alone your local news. Uh, so Farrakhan always gets the press. So, you know, we have to stop playing these games and don't forget Spike Lee had to get on the bus movie. I mean, come on. They promoted it. It seemed good, but it wasn't good. And keep in mind, cause I remember watching it. Uh, I was thinking it was supposed to be something special. But then I kept saying, even then, I was like saying to myself, well, I mean, they didn't exactly say what we're going to do and how things are going to change, you know? It seemed like a Farrakhan grandstanding and they didn't allow Khalid Muhammad to speak. Farrakhan didn't. Because I think Farrakhan knew that Khalid Muhammad, number one, might say some things that go against his uh, master's beliefs. Not that, and let's get it straight for the record. Khalid Muhammad was a uh, Freemason as well. But Khalid Muhammad certainly would have outshined Louis Farrakhan if he had spoken. So it's like um, if you're doing a show, let's say that you're uh, I'll be sure headlining the show and you got Michael Jackson opening up for you. You know, that's how that would have been for Farrakhan at the Million Man March having Khalid Muhammad speak before, right before him. He would have outshined uh, Farrakhan. 
But all he did was talk the same stuff. And like I said, in a different video, he had the bulletproof glass up. Showing that he feared the audience, but he didn't fear the uh, building behind them. They could have taken a shot at his ass if they wanted to. <laughs> so, I mean, these are things you got to think about. So, this guy gets promoted by the media. The, the same Jewish media that he claims to be against. <clears throat> and I'm going to get into some other Jew things like Farrakhan saying that he's has a relative that's a Jew. I'm going to get into a lot of the outlandish things that this guy has been saying over the years, but what it's not really going to be, it's not going to be about a history of Farrakhan because you can research the history, but I'm going to go a little into his history so you can get a better idea of who this coon agent is. <clears throat> so, um, again, the major man March, that was supposed to be his Dr. Martin Luther King moment. Because, you know, Martin Luther King, you know, they put him out there. Then they had to take him out. They put Farrakhan out there. He's been a good boy. So they keep his ass around. They had plenty of opportunities to take his ass out. With the cancer, he went to a white man's hospital. They could have easily said, hey, man, there's nothing we could do, man. Then perform the uh, fake autopsy like they normally do. And say, ah, well. But I remember when he was in the hospital, I remember, I think it was Farrakhan's son, not the one that married the, well, I don't know what the other one did, the light-skinned one, the one that looks like him. He said, if anybody touches, if Farrakhan doesn't survive, we're going to raise hell. So, something to that effect. You know, they always grandstand because it's all an act. You know, it's a Freemason act. And you got to keep in mind, the negative press affects black America because it's brainwashing white Americans. And the white ones, they're the ones who are more susceptible to this brainwashing because they're arrogant because they figure, well, I got everything set. I'm living in a million dollar house. I, I'm, a I'm an attorney. You can't pull anything over on me. So, you know, this is how they do. So they're, they're easily brainwashed, more so than black people. Not that black people are not. So Farrakhan's a coon agent who accomplished absolutely nothing but speeches. Now, he had a lot of people, like I said, the Reggies, the Sarnettas, the everybody else you could think of, former affiliates in the Nation of Islam. Hypocrites that, you know, they, they have, see, this is what I always say. When you have to keep lying to defend your position, you don't have a position. So once you tell the first lie, you might as well stop doing it because you, you you know you're lying. So Farrakhan, the fact that you have to lie to defend the, the Uncle Tom means that uh, you lost already. And Farrakhan is Jamaican, by the way. Jamaican and Caribbean. You know, I'll just call them Caribbean. Some people like to specify. St. Kitts is not exactly a, a popular Caribbean island, so I'll talk about the Jamaican part. <clears throat> I know some people say, yeah, yeah, you just want to. But <laughs> um, I'm saying all this stuff plays a part into it. Because, again, you have a Jamaican, a Caribbean guy in Louis Farrakhan speaking on behalf or speaking for black Americans. But he's not speaking for Jamaicans. This is key because the stuff he talks White people hear it, and white people attribute it all to black America. So he needs to speak for his own people. But the Nation of Islam is a coon operation to begin with. And I was going to go down the line, but since it's on my mind, since uh, Saad Netta wanted to bring out uh, Elijah Muhammad's hoes, and that's what I said, hoes. He wanted to bring that old footage out. We saw that a long time ago. Now, if you notice something about Elijah Muhammad's hoes, they all said, um, no, they were all light-skinned. No lips, pointy nose. Elijah Muhammad, the same look. Funny how the kids came out with thick lips. 
<laughs> black features. Uh, uh, that, that's pretty funny. We're pretty light. See, the Nation of Islam was Elijah Muhammad performing his own uh, Yaqub experiments with the grafting, grafting white pe white people with his own penis. Is that is that what Elijah Muhammad was doing? Because apparently that's that's what it was. Because he had light kids. Farrakhan, same thing, light skin kids. Leadership, light skin. Khalid Muhammad would have been the perfect nation of Islam leader, but for some reason. Well, it ain't for some reason. It's because they're coons. That's why they didn't want him to be uh, the leader. Nori Muhammad. You know, light skin, looking like Farrakhan. All this, is, uh, these are things that are part of the white man's brainwashing techniques this, uh, developed by Nazis and others. And, and they just teach them how to do these things. That's why when you hear everybody affiliated with the nation of Islam, they speak the same they talk the same thing they they kind of try to trap you mentally one nation of islam guy was saying they think about things three and four times before they talk and the reason they do that is because they're thinking of a lie that's <laughs> that's why they think about that just like when they lie about farrakhan with scientology i mean he declared the shit but they still lie about it farrakhan himself lies about it like the eyebrow thing some people say, well, he, he uh, took it back. Well, he took it back years and years later, only when people confronted him with the, with the evidence. Then he said he made a mistake on that. Shouldn't have said it. But you said it and you said it with conviction. And for full dis disclosure, a guy did point out that Malcolm X said it. But when Malcolm X said it, unlike Farrakhan, Malcolm X said the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us and this, and then he proceeded to say the same thing that Farrakhan said. For full disclosure, I don't like being biased. Um, so, but Farrakhan, the nation of Islam, they're anti-black. They just talk black. But when you look at their rules and their actions, it is pro-white and anti-black. And I broke that down in another video, so I'm not even going to... Uh, try to rehash that tonight because <clears throat> the focus is on Farrakhan and I realize whether you're talking about Egypt or Islam and the nation of Islam or the Moors or I'm starting to have to throw the Israelites in this uh, camp too man everything that these guys are teaching is to keep us from the truth that's that's what it's all about Kemet they, they focus on nonsense flat earth and all that bullshit but they pay little time on the race of the Egyptians and what they did for Africa and African relations and other black people and their relations. They don't talk about Canaan. Canaan was black, according to the Bible, too, according to the artifacts. Everything around was black. White man wasn't around. The Turks didn't get there yet. Um, Nation of Islam, same thing. And same thing with Islam, they're just trying to keep your mind off of uh, real stuff and on the fantasy world, which I'm, I'm going to break the fantasy shit down. And again, these are things I'm, I'm going with in the Louis Farrakhan angle. So these guys who defend Farrakhan, number one, they don't want people to put on a proper defense uh, for the truth of Malcolm X, but I will. And I'm going to repeat this because I'm going to do this one in the Malcolm X one. But Malcolm X was not a hypocrite. That's number one. Farrakhan was the biggest hypocrite of any NOI person. Elijah Muhammad was a hypocrite. I'll explain that one in the, uh, in the Malcolm X one. Well, let me say this. Farrakhan, he started off as a violinist then a calypso singer he's caribbean of course called himself the charmer i'm sure a lot of you know that <clears throat> now he was on a tv show in 1948 i keep forgetting the name of the damn show but it was like some american idol type shit uh i wasn't around in 1948 of course <laughs> So 
you know, just from looking at TV and what they say about black people in the 50s and 60s, I would imagine the only blacks who were on TV in the 50s and 60s were comedians and singers and, and shit like that. Dancers. Doing black things. But not too many talking about black issues. So in 1948, for a, a guy like Farrakhan to make it on TV, I told you what these agents, they, what they do is they chronicle their lives on, on picture and, and audio. So then once they get into position, they can say, oh, look what we found. This guy was here. This guy was there. This is part of the egotism of the agent. They love to be worshipped. That's why they do it. They get paid. They get fame. They get their asses kissed. But for this guy to make it on a uh, show, playing the violin, and he just happens to end up being a uh, so-called... See, you notice they never call Farrakhan a radical leader. <laughs> Because radicals are not control. That's why they don't call him a radical. Uh, but he just happened to make it on TV. He released some al uh, records, albums called The Charmer. Uh, I can't really judge if the shit was good or bad, to be honest with you. Because, you know, I guess you had to be around in those times to understand if that music was good or, or bad. I'm sure if it came out now, I don't think people would like it, even people from the Caribbean. But, you know, I don't know how the shit did back then. But it just goes to show he was all in with his Caribbean uh, heritage. And nothing about him was black American. I don't give a damn where he was born at. And I did mention this in another video. Some people try to say I was an idiot for saying it, but they just don't know much. Yeah, Jamaicans, a lot of Jamaicans have a very pronounced jaw and full lips. You can't deny that that's uh, the case. And, and you look at a lot of these uh, Jamaicans out there, who's Usain Bolt, all of them, they have these lips. Of course, there's some slight variations in some Jamaicans, but that's a look at the Shabba ranks. I mean, these are all, oh, I know some people might be laughing, but I'll just say these are some phenotypes of, of Jamaicans and Farrakhan has them if you look at them and he had them even more when he had his natural teeth in and his full uh, overbite you can really see it but obviously he fixed his teeth Malcolm X did too for the record as well because Malcolm X came into the nation of Islam with some jacked up teeth if you could find some of the earliest film of him speaking <laughs> I think it's from the 1950s You'd be like, damn, the Nation of Islam has a whole bunch of drug addicts uh, working for them, which, of course, we know that's the case, too. <laughs> I mean, so Malcolm was looking raggedy, too, at one point in time. And um, so Far Farrakhan was, too. I don't know how much he was making off of his uh, career, but I know when the Nation of Islam members, they um, come in, they're supposed to give up that career, but if you look around, you can find that Farrakhan was still making music, especially Nation of Islam oriented music. And he still played his violin, as people point out, for white people. Because, you know, you got talents, you don't necessarily want to suppress them. And to me, the Nation of Islam shouldn't suppress the talents. But see, that's the cult like mentality where they say, hey, you can't be an individual, you got to be the group. So, Farrakhan. You know, he was a charmer. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Some people say without Elijah, you don't get Farrakhan, you don't get Malcolm, you don't get Khalid, you don't get Farrakhan, and a host of others. But the truth is, without Malcolm X, you get nobody else. Let's say this. Elijah Muhammad is pre-dynastic Egypt. Malcolm X is Narmer. <laughs> Farrakhan is Akhenaten. <laughs> Matter of fact, 
not only Akhenaten, you could say Farrakhan might be the Greeks who, who took over Egypt. If you want to put it that way. Because Fard, see, this is another thing. Fard was supposed to be the creator of the nation of Islam, which he came from the Morris Science Temple nation of Islam. People like to deny that, but of course, the history is clear. And of course, when you say the history is clear, then nation of Islam members say, oh, well, that's according to the white man. So you're taking the white man's uh, word on it. Well, I mean, nation of Islam people lie so damn much. The only outside information you got to go by is the white man. Shit, you got to prove that wrong. I mean, that's what you got to do. You just can't lie about it. You got to prove it wrong. So, Far, you know, started it, but they all say, talk about Elijah more than they talk about um, Far, just like in Orthodox Islam. You know, they rarely mention Prophet Muhammad, and they're mainly talking about, uh, I mean, they rarely mention uh, Allah. I know they have sayings about Allah and all that kind of stuff, but they mainly talk about Prophet Muhammad. Why? Because that's a man. That's why. Uh, Fard was the creator. He's supposed to be God. That's their Allah in the nation of Islam. I mean, people speculate that um, Elijah Muhammad killed Fard. But one thing that happened once Fard disappeared, as they say, but... That's the one thing I could say about the white man. The white man hasn't been able to locate a person in that body. But hey, you never know what the deal could have been. But or far could have been a Jew, like I suspect. And um, did his deed and disappeared. But whatever the case is, after he disappeared, a whole lot of people were fighting to take over the nation of Islam. And it just appears that uh, Elijah was the most ruthless of them all. He survived many uh, killing attempts and then he took over. Because if you talk to the nation of Islam, first thing I say, well, if he was a Freemason and he had the juice card, how come he got arrested? How come, you know, he hasn't been uh, this and he hasn't been that? Well, he did get arrested before he got turned out. Once he uh, got turned out and got the protection he was never arrested again and he was made to be a legitimate leader that the white people were supposed to respect as power see they make that's why they have hands off Elijah hands off Farrakhan because they become legitimate in the eyes of black people because oh man white people won't touch them the reason why white people won't touch them is because these guys are coon agents that's why so that's what we know what Elijah Muhammad was all about and that brings me to this point, which is Farrakhan said he was not attracted to the nation of Islam. I believe he was assigned to the nation of Islam. I got to do some more digging on that because how he got there was kind of weird. But he said he, he said uh, he was not attracted to Elijah Muhammad at all. He said when he heard Malcolm X speak, that's what got him into the nation of Islam. So it was Malcolm X that recruited people. Elijah knew what he had. Uh, that's why he, you know, you got to keep in mind, Malcolm X lived with Elijah Muhammad. So, you know, he knew that Malcolm X was a great recruiter and a great innovator for the nation of Islam. And you could say what you want to say, but a lot of what the nation of Islam became known for and what was attracted to the, uh, the people, attracted to the people, Malcolm X came up with it. Malcolm X attracted Farrakhan. That's why Farrakhan's speaking style and all nation of Islam minister, well, under Farrakhan, they're not ministers anymore. They're student ministers. But after Malcolm X, all ministers patterned their speaking style after Malcolm X because Malcolm X was the most effective. His speaking style is the most attractive. Malcolm X's criminal background helped him to, to uh, develop his speech pattern. Not to say that the Elijah Muhammad didn't give him a few tips, but let's get real. I mean, who do you think came up with the speech uh, pattern and in the, in the speaking style? Elijah Muhammad with his uh, 
10 words every 10 minutes uh, speaking pattern or and not even really being able to really fully form a sentence or Malcolm X. Everything Farrakhan says, he's, he claims he's better than Malcolm X. So how are you going to be better than your teacher who was better than you? And you're the one who stole his style. Every Nation of Islam minister sounds like Malcolm X, just the way every Christian preacher sounds like Martin Luther King. Because those guys were at the top of their game and attracting the people. So people steal their style to try and attract the people. Those were the new replacements. So this is why they steal their style. So Malcolm X, all different Nation of Islam factions, you know, I think all of them, yeah, all of them, including that Brother Royale, Solomon, who claims to be God in person. All different Nation of Islam factions, they all agree on one thing, that Malcolm X was a hypocrite. But when you actually examine the real facts, which I'll get into on the Malcolm X video, Malcolm X was not the hypocrite. But I think a lot of these guys say this because if they don't say this, then it looks like they don't love Elijah Muhammad. See, if they start saying, no, Malcolm X was right, and then in their eyes, they think that other Nation of Islam members won't respect them as being legit. Even though you have different factions and people have different ideas. But um, that is a part of the deal. You have to hate Malcolm X. But when you, when I, and once I get into the Malcolm X thing, I'm going to touch a little bit on this in here. You got to realize if you're honest with yourselves that Malcolm X was never a hypocrite in the nation of Islam. Never. But you're going to find out, and I'm going to break this down in this one about Farrakhan. That Farrakhan is not only a hypocrite to Elijah Muhammad, he's the, the biggest hypocrite in the history of the nation of Islam. But of course, coons out here in the nation of Islam they keep thinking that this is the old Farrakhan that used to roll with Malcolm X. Well, well, I got news for you. That old Farrakhan is, is the nigga who helped to kill him. So, I mean, which Farrakhan is the just Farrakhan? Which Farrakhan is, is the right one? None of them are because he's a coon agent from the beginning. Like I said, Farrakhan was attracted to Malcolm X. You can see in the video... Lewis X with the massive overbite looking kind of crazy with his crazy eyes. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he ended up doing the things that he did because he looked like a sick motherfucker. I know people are going to be like, oh, man, how dare you put down the minister? Well, let me tell you this. The minister wasn't chosen by Elijah Muhammad to be the top man in the nation of Islam. Where you see him, you go to him. Hear him, go there, blah, blah, blah. He, he wasn't talking about that. And the proof is because Wallace was voted as the nation of Islam later. That right there takes away anybody's claim that Farrakhan was next in line. And Farrakhan probably thought he was supposed to be next in line because he... As he, he admitted, created the atmosphere to get Malcolm X killed. Malcolm X got killed. Farrakhan did take over Malcolm X's uh, post. But then once uh, Elijah died, he didn't get that uh, starting job. <laughs> and then he changed it. He followed under Wallace. Called himself uh, Abdul Alim Muhammad or something like that. Uh, and he was dressing like a... Uh, Saudi. So you can look that up online. So he was not the nation of Islam's uh, choice for leadership. That's why he had to come and create his own nation of Islam, which he tries to pattern after the original and claims that that's the uh, continuation of the original nation of Islam, which it isn't. 
just like these other factions of Nation of Islam. You know, you got different guys that came from the Nation of Islam, Elijah's Nation of Islam, and say, hey, I'm, I'm God. Uh, I'm the uh, son of man. I'm this, I'm that, you know. And they claim to be the man you have to follow. Speaking of son of man, I have to say, even though his following is smaller, when it comes to actually doing something, Hey, I, I could say he's actually doing something, you know, but I do take issue with guys who claim to be God. You know, I find that to be a problem. I don't know if it's calculated or, or, or if they're just insane or maybe a little of both, but I take issue with that. So Wallace Muhammad, Elijah's son, and I'm going to get into him more in the Malcolm X thing, uh, but he turned people into Orthodox Islam. He never believed that his father, he never believed in his father's teachings, which shocks me as to why he was elected leader. You know, I, 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 maybe somebody else can shed some light on that <laughs> because he was a hypocrite himself. So why would you elect a hypocrite to lead the nation of Islam unless you were just starstruck because he, he was uh, Elijah's son? I mean, there's videos on there where you can see that they anoint, they uh, appoint him and they're carrying him up and he looks like he's happy and everything. And, you know, but he put it into it. So he's a hypocrite himself, Wallace, but they didn't touch Wallace. And obviously the reason why they didn't touch Wallace is because he's Elijah's son. So Wallace had protection in that way that he couldn't get uh, shot up like Malcolm X did. So. Farrakhan followed Wallace. So that's on the record. So that's how you know that Farrakhan was not supposed to be the nation of Islam leader. Or else he would have been. So at this point, he figures, OK, well, you know what? He claims that, you know, OK, well, we're not following the Elijah Muhammad's way, which, of course, Farrakhan is not. So he comes up with his own crew. And as Angel Snuffed Up 7 said, Farrakhan was broke. Didn't have a nice car and all that kind of stuff. And he got a lot of suckers in. He admits himself being a sucker. And uh, he started getting it on, man. And he started building it up. Who helped him? That's the question. I mean, who who said, hey, Farrakhan, get this back on? According to Angel Snup Nup 7, it was for money. So... Here's the thing. Wallace plays a big factor in the Malcolm X saga. But he got protected because he's Elijah's son. Louis Farrakhan wants you to believe that he loved Elijah Muhammad more than Malcolm X did. But Malcolm X lived with Elijah Muhammad and knew him way before Farrakhan came on the scene. So explain to me how Farrakhan can love him more than Malcolm. Let's keep in mind, Farrakhan had a somewhat privileged life before the nation of Islam. So I, I never heard Farrakhan say, hey, man, I was hooked on coke. You know, I was busting heads. I was prostituting. Never heard him say that about himself. I never heard anybody else say that about him. So, you know, he was an entertainer. I gather he must have been making some kind of uh, living. He actually cut some records, man. So he had to have gotten some money out of the deal. Not that everybody that cuts a record gets paid a lot of money, but I'm just saying, you know, he cut some records. man. So he had to have been doing something. Contrast that with um, Malcolm X, who we know was a lowdown thug criminal, drug addict, gangster, and they always point out messing with white women. You know, the detractors of uh, Malcolm X, See, if you're really for real and you care about black people and you want to tell the truth, you tell the truth on what Malcolm X was. He was a man. He was a just man once he turned his life around. Yes, he admitted he was a criminal. It's not like the man was hiding it. I mean, come on. He has the police record to prove it. He didn't hide it from anybody. So when these cool niggers 
They say, oh, Malcolm X was a uh, criminal, deadbeat, blah, 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 drug addict, burglar. It's nothing new, man. I mean, most of the Nation of Islam members are. Elijah Muhammad said he was a drunk and a criminal. He has a police record. I mean, but you don't like bringing that up, of course. And Elijah Muhammad was a pimp with his hoes. Which is another thing. I guess I'll say now. I was going to save it for the Malcolm X part. Uh, I won't say it all. I'll just say the, these females, they keep saying those girls weren't underage. They were teenagers. Why is a 65-year-old man fucking teenagers? How come he doesn't mess with women in their 30s? He said he had to spread his seed. But see, I called him a pedophile years ago. I spread that around on the Internet. I did that because I used to deal with the irritated genie because I used to get on him. I'm like, how are you going to call R. Kelly a pedophile and not Elijah Muhammad? You try to up big up uh, Elijah Muhammad, but he's a pedophile. The fuck is a 65 year old man having an interest in young teens? Yeah, they were legally of age, but they were still teenagers. That's a pedophile. Some guy tried to challenge me on this. I know I said this in another video. A guy tried to challenge me on it. Just look up the goddamn word. God damn it. But people like to lie. Malcolm is dead. They damn him. Kennedy is dead. They damn him. King and RFK are dead. They damn him. Elijah is dead. They want to lie on the things he actually did that were wrong. And I'm sure when Farrakhan bites the dust... They're going to do the same to him because they're already doing it right now. Shit, even Farrakhan himself is lying about the shit he said. I mean, <laughs> it's just crazy. That's why you got people like me. We just set the, the record straight for what it was. None of the bullshit. Now, if the nation of Islam keeps lying, what are they really trying to achieve? They're trying to accomplish what the white man wants them to accomplish. That's what it is. So Farrakhan wants you to believe... That he loved Elijah Muhammad more than Malcolm X did. And I don't believe it. Farrakhan was power hungry. And he's a coon agent. That's what it was all about. Moving up. I told you coons have to show their faces. They have to be visible. And when they're visible. They can influence. And move, maneuver into hot positions of power. Then they can redirect things. If you look at every speech of Malcolm X with Lewis X in it, I only saw maybe one where Lewis X was actually laughing as if he enjoyed what Malcolm X was saying. And he looked crazy too, by the way. Yeah, I know that's a personal shot. But um, <clears throat> he did look crazy though. But every other video with Lewis X in it, you can see that Lewis X which is Farrakhan, in case those of you who don't know. He's looking mean. He's looking like uh, he can't stand Malcolm X. And this is way before any uh, uh, sexual improprieties came on the scene. You know, I think he was just jealous because Malcolm X was tall. He took command, you know. And they saw how he was the prime minister. He was Elijah's right hand man because Elijah Muhammad couldn't speak for shit. That's why you hardly heard from the guy. And that's why you see in the Malcolm X movie. That one scene where uh, Malcolm X was speaking, then he says, right now, I present to you the most holy, honorable Elijah Muhammad. The messenger of Allah in person, then. They show uh, Elijah Muhammad about to speak, smiling and everything. Then Spike Lee just goes to another scene <laughs> because even Farrakhan himself is on record of saying Elijah Muhammad would drag his speeches on way too long and start putting people to sleep. And they would have to come up to him and say, hey, man, OK, man, let, 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 let's put an end to this. Which goes to show how much he gave a damn about the messenger of Allah's words. You know, <laughs> he was bored with them. Farrakhan himself said these things. So, you know, it's all about power play. 
You notice how once Farrakhan got into power, or even Wallace, matter of fact, I can't even, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I can't find videos of Wallace speaking to the media as the Nation of Islam leader. You know, maybe I should hunt those down. But nobody seemed to object, well, except for the factions, they, they didn't seem to object to Farrakhan being popular. But if you can check things out, you can see that Farrakhan, they say fame went to Malcolm's head. God damn it, the fame clearly went to Farrakhan's head even more. And he loved it. So if you take out Malcolm because fame went to his head, and to me, he was pretty level-headed, but I will admit Malcolm X, uh, you see some of his um, press conferences. Yeah, he, he, he did. You know, the media, it can make you do that sometimes. You, you see how people do on YouTube. It can kind of make you say some things that you wish you hadn't said. And like the JFK thing, yeah, he was told not to say that. And he said it anyways. That was fucked up on his part. But anyways, I'll get more into that when I do the Malcolm X one. So Farrakhan, as you know, the man is no doubt a coon agent. I mean, <laughs> there could be no doubts about that. And part of the reason you know it, and I'm taking this out of order, but uh, you've seen pictures of Farrakhan with uh, taking pictures with the Kardashians, Kanye West, Beyonce, and all these other, what people will call Illuminati puppets. Why do you have to take pictures with the Kardashians? Why would she want to take picture a picture with you? I mean, what's that all about? Now, again, uh, he also made the claim that he's a mulatto. I mean, and when he talked about the Sudanese, he always said black, 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 black. He said the northern Sudanese, they look like us. The southern Sudanese look black, 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 black. So black that they look, they make Brother Akbar here. Uh, cutting on uh, Brother Akbar's complexion. They make him look light. So this is... Uh, the continued colorism and racism of the nation of Islam. But Brother Akbar is a coon himself because he just let Farrakhan say it. Of course, I know he ain't going to say, what you say, nigga? I know he can't say that, of course. But, um, you know, you should at least bring him to the side and say, man, what's up with this, man? You, you could do that to, to the top man. Doesn't mean he's going to listen to you, but, I mean, you can do that. Because if a lot of people voice their uh, displeasure with something he said... After a while, and say, okay, I gotta, I gotta suppress that and change the strategy up. But um, you know, it's kind of like the way people talk about my smack, and I don't think I'm smacking today. And I think part of the reason I, I don't have a bottle of water near me, but um, so I'm kind of <laughs> keeping it the way it is, anyways. But anyways, <clears throat> this is what uh, Farrakhan does. He says these things. It's colorism. It's racism. That's why the high command has always been light. High yellow white style. Same thing with the NAACP. So, I mean, you got to understand, man, this is all, they're all controlled groups. And you could tell that they're controlled because when they get money, just like the churches, they do nothing. They'll keep talking you to death. They'll keep asking you for money. But they won't do a thing. If, like I said this before. If the church. Would do. Even just dedicate 20% of their take. To black America. God damn it. We'd already be set free. But they're that cheap. And selfish. They don't even want to do that. Now another thing Farrakhan has done. Is he, he keeps claiming that he knows God. He has a personal relationship with God. He spoke to God last night. I mean, motherfucker record the conversation one day. You know, I mean, can you do that, Farrakhan? <laughs> I mean, he won't do that, of course. But this is, of course, to keep 
the mentally ill and the drug addicted followers to uh, keep thinking that Farrakhan is something special. Like I said, it's this God complex. And this is how the Freemasons analyze everything. And of course, the Nation of Islam, the Moors and everything. This is this is why they come up with this God complex. They always got to throw God into it because people thousands of years ago found out that people seem to want to stick to a God. So every leader, ancient Egyptians included, Romans included, Greeks included, Hannibal included, everybody you could think of has always attached themselves to God and proclaimed that God has ordained them or they're one with God. Look at the Egyptian pharaoh names. I mean, they're all attaching God to their names. Even Hannibal is attaching God to his name. Israel. I mean, everything you could think of, man, it's attaching God to the name. And it doesn't mean that the leaders believe it. I mean, some of just crazy ass psychopaths and they might believe it. But others know that they have to incorporate God, whether they believe God or not, because they figure, well, the masses are going to believe it. And God is a buffer between the masses taking their heads off and and, uh, and and the, these people getting their heads taken off. So that's why they always insert God, because when they do wrong, then they say, well, God will sort it out or God has uh, told me this. That's when they inject God, when the people are coming after their ass. So because they don't want to take the blame, because that's why when you have charlatans, con men for your money. They always bring up God, you know, because that's supposed to catch you off guard. See, when people talk to me, they bring that God stuff up and then um, they don't understand. Everybody you're talking to is not down with it. Just like the Israelites, when they're on the street, they talk about the Bible. According to the Bible, it says this, that and the other. But there are some people who say, I don't give a damn about the Bible. So you can't really tell me anything about that. Then what did the Israelites say? They say, well, this is not for you then. If you don't believe in the Bible, see, the fact is you, you can't believe in something. Something has to be real. Believing is using your imagination. The leaders don't believe in God because they can't believe in God, because if they believed in God, they wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't have guns. They wouldn't try to kill people, bomb people. And that's what the nation of Islam does. You talk shit about Farrakhan. Hey, man, you it could get you hurt. That's what they say. You know, it could get you hurt. Young Pharaoh, you know, we don't want no, you know, you know we don't want no Malcolm X situation. Khalid Muhammad. We don't want no Malcolm X situation, even though it turned out that way again. So, you know, that's why when the God bullshit fails on them, then they resort to the violence. Just the same way with uh, Christianity and the spread of Islam. You know, first Islam, they say, hey, man. We got this new God, uh, you know, look at the, uh, the, the, the rules and, and, you know, see if you're down with this. Matter of fact, they didn't say, see if you're down with it. They said, you better get down with it. That's what they said. <laughs> and if you don't get down with it, we coming for you. People didn't get down with it. They came for them. Now, if the armies of Islam would not have prevailed, then everybody else would have said, well, I guess Allah is not happening. And you guys can't do nothing. So, man, fuck this Islam. But since they did prevail, to the extent that they did, more people got down with it and said, okay, yeah, I'm down with it. Whether I believe it or not, I'm down with it. And then I'll use some Islam of my own to conquer some other people and use Islam as the excuse. So this is what they do the world over, regardless of religion. And in a sense, some atheists use the same thing, but take God out of the picture. But obviously, as you can tell, atheism does not seem to attract the masses as a, a God. When it comes to God and everything, man makes up the rules of God. <laughs> so that's another topic. Let me get into the Farrakhan when he dismissed Elijah Muhammad. I mean, uh, Khalid Muhammad. Khalid Muhammad was down with Farrakhan for the longest time. This is how disloyal Farrakhan is. 
I don't want to recant everything that Elijah Muhammad did, but you know what the man said in public, even after he got dismissed. And I was surprised when it happened. Pharaoh's too young to remember that, but I remember it well. You can see the whole lecture on YouTube, but if you can't, because a lot of them have been taking it down, you can always go to C-SPAN. You can order the uh, official copy of a lot of those every C-SPAN uh, broadcast. You know, you might have to pay a little more money than the average person might want to pay, but if you can't get it, that's a, you know, order it from there. That's another thing, too. For a lot of younger people like Pharaoh... They say that f that's another uh, clue that Farrakhan is a coon agent because C-SPAN almost always broadcasts everything Farrakhan did. So that shows you what, you know, what, what it's all about, man. I mean, he, he needs the publicity and they give it to him. But when he let uh, Khalid Muhammad, he always talked about you could find videos before he got famous like that. Um, and we talk about how he knew Farrakhan and the protection and I mean the man pleaded played his heart out man about how much he loved Farrakhan he even named his son after him just like Malcolm X named one of his daughters after Elijah come on nobody names a child after somebody who they don't like <laughs> I mean, come on, but these ungrateful niggas, their service is to the white man, not to the black man. So I'm going to just fast forward. Malcolm, uh, Khalid Muhammad, I mean, brilliant man, Malcolm X of the 90s. And almost 30 years to the day that, uh, and he said it too. That Malcolm X had the issues with Elijah. Then all of a sudden there was an issue with Khalid Muhammad. History repeats itself not because it just happens to repeat itself. It repeats itself because there are people writing history. And that's why shit always just happens to fall on the anniversary of something else. That happened. That's why music artists just happen to get killed before they're about to drop their next album. You know, these aren't coincidences. These are things that are orchestrated. But anyways, Farrakhan and his coon ass. And yes, I said it. Uh, his reasoning for letting Kali go. Number one, he did it because the white man told him to do it. But even though Farrakhan, as you hear now, he talks about the Jews, but nobody lets his ass go. He said, essentially, he agreed with everything that Khalid said he just didn't like the way he said it <laughs> which amounts to bullshit so he's getting relieved of his post doesn't make any sense okay you agree with what he said but I don't like the way he said it you bastard I don't like the way you said that excuse me you, you, you bastard okay I like the way you said that you know makes no sense because it's bullshit so he let him go never communicated with the man again shit on him like he did Malcolm X after he died Mal uh, Louis Farrakhan and his nation of Islam shot up Khalid Muhammad like Malcolm X see Khalid was supposed to die that day but like Malcolm X well unlike Malcolm X he survived but like Malcolm X Khalid Muhammad survived enough to tell who the fuck did it and it's on record the prime difference between Malcolm X and Khalid Muhammad telling who who was either about to kill him or tried to kill him is that Khalid Muhammad didn't get prime time networks to uh, record it that's the difference while Malcolm X then he had all the, the major networks on his ass so he can call the media anytime. You know, they were looking for the action and, and entertainment in that. More so than... Uh, I'm going to get into that. So I was about to get into the Malcolm X part. More so than the... Um, worrying about Elijah. 
and bringing the nation of Islam down. They were looking at the action and excitement. But Khalid Muhammad, <clears throat> it's the good thing he lived a good while to at least keep on talking. But he got shot by the nation of Islam. They, they lie about that too. So Khalid Muhammad was uh, delusional when that happened. He got killed in 2001. They say poison, aneurysm, poisoned by niggas like Sarnetta and the new Black Panther coons. Because they're government created too, by the way. Uh, I, I think I did one on that, so I'm not going to rehash that. That's why you see when this thing happened, Sarnetta wears his bow tie <laughs> and um, takes up for Farrakhan, Dick Gregory. Supposed to be supposed to have been Malcolm X's uh, buddy. Sticks up for Farrakhan. He even lies about Farrakhan. I'm getting to that in the, in the Malcolm X one. John Henry Clark was Malcolm X's buddy. He stayed true. But a lot of people turn on uh, Malcolm X, even though they weren't a part of the nation of Islam, and got down with Farrakhan. Why? Because a lot of people they turn with the power source. That's why. They don't want to go against the man, so they figure they go with them. But Farrakhan will be dying one day. And I can bet you a lot of these people, some they might turn on his ass. <laughs> Which would be good for him. So, this Sarnetta, you know, the Freemason protecting another Freemason. That's all that is. And he shit on Malcolm X. Uh, well, I'm about to end this pretty soon and get to the Malcolm X in a minute. Hopefully my voice holds up. <clears throat> because um, I'll wait for the Malcolm X on that. But the way he did Khalid Muhammad, I think if Khalid Muhammad, I think he was ordered to be killed because things are crafted by people in control. They have to guide people like sheep, as people say. Khalid Muhammad killed in 2001 before September 11th and before they started selling you on Obama. Imagine if a Khalid Muhammad would have been around during September 11th. Imagine what he would have been saying. Imagine when they started selling you on Obama. Imagine what he would have been saying. But we saw, we heard what Farrakhan said. He was trying to help the white man sell us on Obama. That's another thing you could, you could find out that Farrakhan is a coon agent. And I'm glad I just mentioned that because it just reminded me what I was talking about the other night with these people. Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> Farrakhan got so many Negroes to say Gaddafi was a great African leader and, and a great black man. That's when Gaddafi was alive. But when they were about the, you know, causing, when the CIA was causing the turmoil in Libya, under Obama, by the way, who Farrakhan endorsed, <laughs> Farrakhan started saying, uh, "You better not invade Libya," or my friend Muammar Gaddafi. Of course, doesn't matter how mean Farrakhan wants to sound. What is he gonna do? Nothing. He could have sent a thousand Nation of Islam guys out there to help uh, his detail out there. But, he, of course, he didn't want to do that. He could have done it. His, his good buddy. <laughs> he could have done it, but he didn't do it. Farrakhan is friends with no one, apparently. And it's not good to be friends with Farrakhan. Or you got, your ass could end up dead, like they say, and like his followers keep on suggesting. Or out of luck. You know, because he's still in luck, because, not because God is on his side, because the white man is on his side. But if you can find the video of Farrakhan, I think it was in New York. He had on a tan safari type shirt, which I hate when he wears those shirts. And I can swear Nation of Islam mantra is you're supposed to be dressed up, suited up every time you uh, talk about Elijah Muhammad's message. But anyways, in that rally, I guess you can call it. Farrakhan talked about Gaddafi. He's like, damn, they got him. That's messed up. 
And then he just went on talking about some other shit. Didn't even really give a damn about Gaddafi. Never heard about him talking about the motherfucker again. <laughs> it goes to show this guy is a heartless motherfucker. Kill a brilliant man like Malcolm X. Shoot another man, brilliant man like uh, Khalid. See, this, the difference between Malcolm X and Khalid, or Khalid, Malcolm X was Farrakhan's master. Farrakhan was Khalid's master. So Farrakhan didn't respect authority, don't even respect his subordinates. The only authority he respects is the white man. So, as far as Gaddafi, find me some speeches when he mentioned the guy again, unless he just happened to be talking about Libya. He didn't give a damn, he didn't weep for the guy. He just said, ah, oh, shit, it, you know, it, that's the way it is. You know? Because he's no longer around, so he no longer had to kiss Gaddafi's ass and, and acted like he cared. Goes to show how, how much of a friend he is. So, you know, this, this is what happens with this guy. This is why this guy is a coon agent. Uh, he also says things to the effect that the mothership is circling around the earth right now. I think my, my Elijah Muhammad is supposed to be on it. <laughs> I mean, come on. This is more of the God stuff, the, the spooky stuff. The See, when you're coming out of uh, drug addiction, I never use drugs, by the way. I never will. Your mind is under control. So people can implant thoughts into your mind. And psychopaths believe it. Because that's who follows the nation of Islam. Psychopaths. <clears throat> and I get that idea because I was playing this game, Dead Rising. Years ago, the man went to a movie theater. There were a bunch of religious cult psychopaths. <laughs> My man couldn't reason with them. Couldn't do shit. They were just programmed to kill. Because you went, you went against their shit. That's the way the nation of Islam, you know, they're cult psychopaths. Well, not everybody. Some people get out and then when you get out, you get shot, get beat down, all that kind of shit. That's a cult. They got to beat it into you. If you can't fear God... They want you to fear them. But see, people in the nation might fear them, but people like me outside of the nation, I don't give a damn. Young Pharaoh got shook, but we already know what the young Pharaoh is all about, though. As if we can't tell. So he has this mothership that's supposed to be circling to attack the earth or something. Or you're supposed to get on the mothership if you're down with the nation. You know, that's the same thing with religion. Join us. God will save you. Don't join us, you die. But here's the interesting thing about life, which I'll say if you want to call it a God made it all up. You're going to die anyway. So do you want to die a bitch? Or do you want to die somebody who's a real, you know, a man or a woman? You want to die a real or a scared coward? That's the question. So, these religious people with their religions, they can't say, hey, man, you get you. If you don't get down with this, you're going to die. We're all going to die. That's the one thing, you know, no matter who threatens you in the world. My bosses, the government, the one thing, you know, that's certain is eventually they'll die, too. But you got to try to prevent them from taking you out. You got to get them before they get you. But um, but that's what they do, man. They they use the fear thing. So let me say this as well. Other clues, as we know, Farrakhan converted the nation of Islam over to Scientology, or uses elements of it. He said it in his July 2012 speech. Unfortunately, my hard drive, I don't know why every time I get the footage I like, the hard drives go down. That's why I'm not fucking with a desktop hard drive again. Only the laptop laptop hard drive seem to uh, keep going on and on and on without flaws. And I just find that weird since they're smaller. But I guess they're built to a higher standard. So those, those are the only kind of hard drives I'm saving uh, videos and shit on now. But, um... <clears throat> 
in his July 2012 speech. He said he had the white Scientologist leaders stand up in the audience. He said applaud them. Obviously, it was uh, set up because they were invited and they were in the audience. And his Farrakhan followers, they uh, obviously didn't object. <laughs> because Farrakhan says so. Even though you're supposed to be following the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. Not the teachings of Louis Farrakhan. So that's what Nation of Islam people don't understand. They, they try to defend Farrakhan like people used to defend Elijah. Farrakhan is not Elijah Muhammad. Farrakhan, all he ever was, was just a minister. That's all the ministers of Elijah Muhammad were. They were ministers. Yes, they were heading over mosques and everything. But no minister was higher than the other. Malcolm X, if there were a title, he would have been called prime minister, but he was basically Elijah's right-hand man, national spokesman. Because obviously he was the best spokesperson, the best thinker. Um, but Farrakhan keeps following his own rules. Elijah Muhammad, for all you, Lewis, uh, you Nation of Islam people, and I'm not even Nation of Islam, <clears throat> but Elijah Muhammad said, do not change the teachings when I'm gone. Wallace denounced the teachings while Elijah was alive <laughs> and he helped bring the nation of Islam down or at least Malcolm X down and I'll get into that in the Malcolm X one he damn sure changed the teachings after he took over <laughs> and then of course Louis Farrakhan forms his own which is supposed to be based on Elijah and he slowly but surely changed the teachings changed them to the point where he said Fuck Elijah. Fuck forward. He didn't say it in those words, of course, but when everything isn't focused on those guys and what they taught, then you change it. You said, fuck them. So um, instead, he brings into the, the white Scientologist, Ron L. Hubbard and, his, and these kooky people. Uh, he also said that his daughters or something like that, granddaughters going to white universities. So... With that being said, you should be able to learn from the white man because you learn at the universities. So Scientology is, is not a problem. You could tell in that speech, you got to listen to it for yourself. I'm not about the money and all down, but you could tell this was something that Farrakhan was forced to do. The white man said, boy, you better get to it, boy. And he got to it because it was abrupt. And, you know, he had to break it all down to make you basically say, OK, well, let's forget every bad thing we ever said about the white man. And now we're on to Scientology. Uh, technology, he called it. But as far as Nation of Islam goes, Elijah is supposed to be the only one that you're supposed to follow. So if you're following anything other than Elijah Muhammad, you, Nation of Islam people, you, Farrakhan, are hypocrites. Because Malcolm X, I don't want to hear none of you try to defend Farrakhan and none of you try to claim that you're following Elijah Muhammad and, and try to defend the Scientology shit because you're hypocrites straight up. Malcolm X never <clears throat> turned hypocrite. Never. So he never went away from the teachings. That's what you got to understand. But Farrakhan and Wallace did. But you still get Farrakhan a pass. That's how you know who the coon agents were because Malcolm X got killed. Wallace lived his life out and became a pedophile like his father. Farrakhan's living his life out. Pretty clear. So in that speech, July 2012, I forgot the exact date, but at least that helped you narrow it down, <laughs> you know? Uh, once I heard that, I said, God damn, this man just changed it all around. So I don't even know what the future of the nation of Islam is going to be. I don't know if uh, it's going to end once, uh, uh, once Farrakhan dies or not. All indicators are that it just might. <clears throat> but he put the nail in the coffin for anything nation of Islam. It's going to be up to these other 
Nation of Islam factions to uh, carry on with the Nation of Islam. So with that, Farrakhan is the biggest hypocrite in the history of the Nation of Islam. He did more to end the Nation of Islam and disrespect Elijah Muhammad than Wallace and Malcolm X did combined. Again, Malcolm X never turned hypocrite on Elijah Muhammad. Never. I'll explain that in the Malcolm one. But I'm sure people are still programmed to hate Malcolm X. And I explained this to Eric Muhammad. But he just stopped communicating with me. But I think it's because they feel that they have to hate Malcolm X. Like I said, in order to feel like they're legit. Because if you start saying, I love Malcolm X, then people say, oh, he turned hypocrite on the messenger. That means you don't really love Elijah. How come Farrakhan gets the pass, man? He turned total hypocrite. To the point where his family members are marrying white devils, as they call them. Having babies with white devils, having baby devils. <clears throat> Which is not shocking, given the fact that Farrakhan only likes light-skinned women. Because they're all cooned out. So that's total hypocrite. He handed the nation of Islam over to white Scientologists. Handed it over to them. That's hypocritical as it gets. Wallace turned hypocrite, but he was always hypocrite. So he, you know, I just still don't understand why he was still hanging around. That's what I don't understand. <laughs> But, you know, it is what it is and it was what it was. But, um, since he went against Elijah's teachings, man, he allowed white people in the nation of Islam. It, explain to me how somebody white can want to join the nation of Islam when white people are supposed to be called white devils and all this other stuff. Doesn't make any sense, but what makes sense is that the Nation of Islam is going down after Farrakhan. And Farrakhan is a coon agent just taking his orders from the white man. And with that being said, as young Pharaoh might say, I have proven, I'm sorry, I have proven my case. And this case closed. And anybody can't, can refute this if you want to. But if you refute this and you don't have evidence, you're just lying. And I dismissed the lies.